Thank you, Dr. Brooks. And uh, I got a tweet earlier that I'd really like to address, and uh, I have it right here. And it was asking, what are your tips in investing for a time period of about 15 years? And I really like that because it's really just talking about intermediate investing. Uh, and it's uh, really overlooked uh, more so than short and long-term investing, and it has different rules, obviously. And so, you know, I'm just going to jump right in and say, you know, maybe once you've found out how much money you have from your job or resources or whatever, and you're going to want to take 50% of your capital and put it into something stable. So maybe put it, I would put it in to something like a mutual bonds fund. That's what I would advise. And, you know, it's very stable, so it's a good investment. And then you can take about 30% and put it into common size. And now... They are more volatile than stocks, but the amount of time that you're keeping them allows um, the volatility to reduce because there is an upward trend. So the damage it could cause is not as great, and that's very nice. Now you're going to want to put the remaining 20% into a real estate investment group, and these are awesome. I love them. And they can give you back a very satisfying return, and you don't have to become a landlord. So that means you're not having to buy and sell properties, you don't have to worry about tenants, and it's great. While you do have to put in money, uh, that way in case there are vacancies, they can help pay for that. Um, if you choose a really good uh, investment group, um, the danger can be greatly reduced, so you don't have to worry as much about that happening. Alright, now that I've talked about you know what you should put in, I'm going to go more in depth in each of these and talk about you know why, what's great about them, and stuff like that. All right, and again, you know, I'm going to say, obviously, how to choose uh, the stocks that you want to go uh, invest in. You know, when doing this, you should look at the company's past. You know, are they stable? Do they have growth? How reliable are they? Are they going to, um, you know, are they going to last a long time? Because they have to, you know, last a long time because you're investing for a 15-year period. And so when doing this, what you really want to look for is that they are stable. You know, you can allow for somewhat of a volatile stock just because of the time period, but you don't want to go overboard in that they are just not stable whatsoever. And as well, as long with that, you will also want a stock that is having a good growth because obviously you want to get a good return on your investment. So you really need to make sure of that. And also make sure you know that company is a solid company. You have other reasons for choosing that stock. You know you really want to have a reason. You don't want just someone told you about it, and so that's why you're doing it. You want to research about it and make sure it is solid. Uh, now I'm going to go on to bonds, and you know uh, bonds are much more stable stocks, about three times as stable. And you know instead of investing into a specific type of bond, I like to um, advise my clients to put into a mutual bonds fund. This allows for professional money managers to really um, allows them to invest and hold your money. So it's uh, they have a lot more experience than you might have. And so that allows for some of the novice investors to still have a good chance. <clears throat> now, remember to choose the bond fund wisely. You will also, just like the stocks, you want to make sure it is a good Fund. You want to make sure that it is stable, good growth. You want to make sure that you believe in it and that it is a good company or a, a good fund, I should say. And now, lastly, I'm going to go into um, investing in real estate. And like I said earlier, you want to, want to go ahead and invest in a real estate investment group. You know, you're extremely helpful because you don't have to become a landlord. It's really great. And, uh, you know, all you have to do is put in some money if there's a vacancy, like I had said earlier, and then you can get part of the profit from the other tenants' rent. And again, you want to follow the same principles for uh, the mutual bonds fund and the stocks in choosing this uh, investment group. And now you also want to be aware that you will be taxed on this. Luckily, you don't have to have income tax, but you will be taxed on the profits you make from each of these investments. And now you're going to be taxed about 15% because of the mutual gains. I'm sorry, the capital gains tax. And, you know, you want to make sure you will remember this when investing because, you know, that could be a lot uh, depending on how much you are investing and uh, how much the profit is. And you want to make sure because you have you need to account for that when investing to make sure you have enough money for whatever you're investing for. 
And all right, that's uh, all I have to say on uh, intermediate investing. I'm going to hand it back to Dr. Brooks. Uh, thank you for having me.